In the last video, we saw that broadly there are two categories of khayal compositions that is the bada khayal and the chota khayal. And uh, we took a look at um, the chota khayal or the small khayal which is uh, composed and sung in madhya or dhritlaya that is at a medium or fast tempo. Uh, we saw a variety in terms of their setting in different talas and different mukhras. In this video, we take a look at the bada khayal or the vilambit khayal. The compositional form of vilambit khayal sometimes uh, often simply referred to as the vilambit can be seen as the heart of the khayal genre. Now, very simply, the bada khayal or the vilambit khayal is a khayal composition that is set in a vilambit layer of teen taal or ek taal or chap taal etc. And the laya would be something like this. Uh, suppose it is teen taal, uh, it would be dha, dhin, dhin, dha. So, that is the space spacing between the matras. Uh, so, it is leisurely, it is vilambit. <coughs> and uh, as we have seen also, the uh, ektal vilambit tends to be even more leisurely. So, it would be like dhin, dhin, dha, ge, ti, ra, ki, ta. So, that is the first four matras of a vilambit ektal of a certain life. It could be less vilambit or more vilambit depending on the performer on the school basically. Now, like other khayals, like other khayal compositions, the text of uh, any vilambit uh, khayal is usually in the in braj uh, and sometimes uh, in Punjabi and uh, it too has two parts, the sthai and the antara. The sthai uh, like in the Chota Khayal remains in the lower and the middle ranges or the Mandra and Madhya Saptak while the Antra goes into the Tar Saptak. I will now demonstrate to highlight some important aspects of the Vilambit Khayal and make the point that it is a, a pretty unique kind of composition that is the slow pace or the tempo of the Tal that is a very Vilambit layer. It sets unique challenges for the setting of the composition in Tala and we will see that how it is set in Tala is somewhat unique. What follows is a Vilambit Khayal in the Rag Shuddha Sarang in Vilambit Tintal composed by Ustad Khadim Hussain Khan Sahab of Agra Gharana. Khadim Hussain Khan Sahab happens to be my grand guru in a sense that is my both my gurus, Pandit Vasandrao Kulkarni and Baban Rao Haldankar, were disciples of uh, uh, Khan Sahab. And um, so I am, um, I do trace my lineage in the Agra Gharana to this uh, Ustad. The text of the composition, it is a supplication, it is a prayer to the Sufi saint Nizamuddin Auliya, asking for is grace. The text is like this. Naya muri par karu tum hazrat nizamuddin auliya and the antra goes like this. Apne sajan par mehr ki nazar rakho tum ho bade gareeb nawaz. The ancient metaphor of the boat and uh, the challenge of crossing the bhavasagar or human existence is compared to a journey in the ocean and it is the Lord's grace that can get you across. And this metaphor is employed here easily in the context of asking for the grace of a Sufi saint. And uh, the signature of the composer Khadim Hussain Khan Sahib appears in the antra or the second part of the composition that is Sajan. Sajan Piya was his takhallus uh, or signature. <coughs> now, um, the demo we will use a tabla app so that the tal setting is clear. And this is as I said in 
Bilambitin tal of 16 matras. The mukhada is naya muri par with a sum on pa. Naya muri pa. Vahampe sum. Sum falls on that word par. Do take a listen. Muri pa. The Vilambit Khayal has an interesting relationship with the Tala and this can be explained in terms of an ancient distinction between Nibadha and Anibadha Sangeet. Now Nibadha Sangeet or Nibadha music is music which is bound, that is Badha is bound. It could be bound in Tala or it could have, you know, it could be bound in text etc. And then we have music that is not tied down by anything. It is not bound into a structure by, uh, by any consideration like rhythm or text. It is, it is free and it is called Anibadha. And historically, music making has involved the coming together of Nibadha and Anibadha Sangeet, which is something like coming together of composition and improvisation, we can say, but not quite. It is not the same distinction. Um, now, um, how is a song bound in Tala? That is, how is it, uh, what can its relationship with the Tala be? There are several layers, several levels at which this relationship works. Now, uh, <coughs> a song can be and is always contained in a certain number of avartanas of the tala. Hmm? And that is a very fundamental way the song is, song can be nibadha, that is it is bound, it, it unfolds within a certain number of avartanas or tala cycles. Hmm? But it can be and usually is more in the sense that the parts of the song, that is the syllables, the text. Uh, these are held in place by the units of the tala. That is, the song is bound in tala by the syllables of the text and the matras of the tala coming together and creating a pulse as it were. So, if for instance this, any song that you could, simple rhymes like Baba, black sheep, have you any wool? Tack, 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 tack. This is a very, very basic way, and you can see the pulse, right? So the the beat and the syllable coincide, right? Um, so this is where the feel of the, I mean, we can feel the tala and the matras while the song is unfolding as much as the melody itself. That is also very much part of the experience of the song. And many kinds of song and uh, music are tied down or bound in tala in this manner. That is beats and pulses are very much part of the song. They are woven into the song. Now the khayal as a composition in general and the vilambit in particular uh, do not exhibit this kind of relationship with the tala, this kind of being bound in tala. There is, there is a certain looseness in this respect. 
of course khayal compositions all unfold or are contained within a certain number of avartanas of one or the other tala but they don't exhibit what may be called a, a syllabic relationship with tala this they do not have this additional level of being bound in tala to make this clear i will demonstrate again with the same vilambit khayal first i will sing it in a manner where there is this more direct and simple relationship of the bandish with the tala when most syllables of the bandish coincide with the matra of the tal mori ta as i said the matras and the syllables of the song keep missing each other while rendering the vilambit we strive for a, a seamless experience by letting the matras of the tala slip in between the syllables of the text or in other words we weave the composition into the tala cycle but without latching on to every matra of course landing on the sum using the mukhada is imperative and most musicians also acknowledge another point in the song text that must coincide with a matra in the middle of the cycle here for example in this composition uh, nizamuddin the din falls on the khali there is a 10th matra this is something that is also part of the structure of the composition as i learned it but apart from these two points that is the sum and some some matra in the middle of the cycle uh, generally the composition will glide between the matras so that there is uh, very little very few places where the syllable of the 
composition and the matra actually come together. So, most matras of the Thala cycle will slip between the text syllables so that they are not highlighted. Or, as I said, we can say that the syllables of the text fall in between the matras of the Thala, except at the sum, where it is absolutely essential that the syllable of the song and the matra come together with precision. And also, because the other syllables fall between the matras and are not accentuated, the landing on the sum is more accentuated. That, uh, that coming together of the text of the song and the tal cycle is felt more intensely because elsewhere in most, most other parts of the composition, this kind of coming together is not uh, found. And because it is not set very tightly or very precisely or very rigorously in tal, with a determination of where each syllable falls in the Thala cycle, there is a certain looseness to the Vilambit Khayal. And each time it is rendered, there is likely to be very slight subtle changes. It is more like the Sthai or the Antra is stretched to fill the Abhartan. In fact, the expression used is Sthai Bharna, it is to fill out the Sthai. In contrast, in the case of Dhrupad or Carnatic compositions, the, uh, they, these compositions are bound more tightly in Thala. They are more, uh, what we call, syllabic. <coughs> so, the Vilambit Khayal challenges the Nibadha and Nibadha distinction in an interesting way. It is in Thala, but is not tied down to it like a... Um, it is not bound in it to the extent that a Karnatic Kriti is or even a Dhrupad composition is. If we think of <coughs> the meeting points of the syllables of the composition with the Tala Matras as stitches or tacks, then there are very few tacks. So, it gives a, a seamless experience. In fact, this is a, a very good metaphor. Now, what is this seam? We speak of seamless experience. So, what is a seam? It is where two pieces of fabric are brought together and stitched together. Now, here we have the composition and the, we have the composition and the tal theka. They are brought together in the khayal rendition, but there are very few stitches or tacks. So, there is a, a seamless quality to the vilambit because there are very few places where the syllable of the bandish has to fall on the matra of the tal. The Thala and the Bandesh run parallel as it were, meeting only at a few points, necessarily at the sum. So, this is actually a, a subtler relationship. It is not unconnected to the Thala, absolutely not. There is definitely a certain um, awareness, the Thala flow is reflected in the way the Vilambit unfolds. But that is a, a subtler relationship, not one where the syllable and matra just uh, come together. It is, it is, a, it is uh, as I said, there is very much a connection, but it is subtler. Now, the second part of the uh, Vilambit composition is, as a, is called Antara, like in the Chota Khyal. And uh, during performance, in usually, uh, what happens is the sthai is presented and then there is a lot of improvisation or what is called rag vistar around it. And after that as uh, usually when the tarasa or the upper sa is uh, you know explored and you hit the tarsa, after that the antara is rendered. So typically the composition as a whole is not rendered together. Hence, the sthai and antara are separated uh, considerably, except you know in one school, the, the Atrali Jaipur, where uh, the sthai and antara are rendered together fully before they embark upon vistar or improvisation. So, the bandish we just heard, Nayamuri 
पार करो इन शुद्ध सारंग निलंबित तीन ताल वॉज अ प्रेयर टू द सुफी सेंट निजामुद्दीन अलिया देर आर मेनी अदर थीम्स एंड अदर ताल आज ऑफ कोर्स इन निलंबित ख्याल सो लेट एस जस्ट हैव अ सैम्पल ऑफ दीज फर्स्ट टू टेक राग मिया मलहार मलहार इज यूजली अ सेलिब्रेशन ऑफ रेन्स you know it's it's associated with the season of uh, monsoon uh, and compositions in these ragas malhar is also a family right it's it's a type it's a malhar ang malhar prakar there are many kinds of malhar ragas so uh, compositions in these ragas often describe the monsoon and in fact it's also believed that singing a malhar properly can even bring down uh, the rains you know it can cause a downpour um now in a twist to this traditional association of malhar with the presence of rains pandit kumar gandharva has composed a vilambit khayal which um, bemoans the absence of rains the uh, text goes like this kari megha barisit nahi there is dark clouds come and pass without giving rains this is a common experience in the drier parts of the country the text is like this kari megha barisit nahi hari hari doob sukh gayo ha ha kar macho chah aur This is thai. Dark clouds pass without giving rain. Green stalks have all dried up. Despair all around. This is in Milambit Ektal. Typically, as I said, Milambit Ektal is rendered at a much slower pace than Milambit Tintal. <laughs>
Now let us look at another theme, another kind of laya in Vilambit, a composition in Ragnanda. Here the laya is much faster than the previous Vilambit. It is still called Vilambit only. Uh, this is also Vilambit Tintal. Let us listen to this thai. Ragnand, uh, this is a, we call it Vilambit Tintal. Uh, it is a little fast Vilambit. is actually a description of it, of the uh, innocence and charm of a young groom and bride, which is actually a common theme in uh, Khayads. You find many compositions that describe uh, the situation of marriage, mm -hmm. uh, typically the beauty, the charm of the bride and the groom. <coughs> now we have seen a composition in devotion 
another about rains or absence of rains about young brides and grooms now we look at love shringara um in this pandesh uh the naika the heroine is uh, it's in the voice of a woman it's uh, she is pining for her lover this is in the rag multani and again in ektal vilambit ektal she says muri sudha le ho beg tum aan muri gunavanta balavanta let us you have taken away my sanity muri sudha le ho beg tum aan come quickly to me then the antra says your gunidas has gone mad there is bhayo hai बावरू अब तुमरो गुनिदास कछु सूझत नाही मुरे पिया प्राण यो गुनिदास हैज गॉन मैड आई नोस नॉट व्हाट टू डू सो कम क्विकली माय पिया प्राण नाउ दिस इज अ कंपोजिशन ऑफ पंडित जगन्नाथ बुआ पुरोहित हु आल्सो इज माय ग्रैंड गुरु पंडित वसंतराव कुलकर्णी वाज आल्सो अ डिसिपल ऑफ पंडित जगन्नाथ बुआ पुरोहित and uh, jagannath bua purohit was one of the uh, most highly regarded uh, vagyakaras of the 20th century and his takhallus or signature was gunidas <coughs> and here uh, as you would have noticed in the antara the uh, signature is there bayo hai baavaru ab tum ro gunidas but there is also the uh, signature pran pia here it's not a signature it is a reference to milayat husain khan sahib who was the guru of jagannath bua purohit so in this bandish and in many of his most of his other bandishes jagannath bua purohit gives expression to his own yearning to be with his guru it's like he's singing to his guru In fact, this is a very famous guru-shishya relationship that's been captured in compositions, and we have other instances too, uh, including compositions composed in response to an earlier one, as a reply to or a take on the idea expressed in an earlier composition. So, khayal compositions are not just abstract compositions to capture a facet of a raga, which they necessarily are. but they are also rooted in lived experiences and feelings of the composers rooted in the community of musicians and connoisseurs composers call out to each other respond to each other throw challenges accept them and so on in these compositions muri sudhale ho in multani vilambit ekta nare
We also have Vilambit Khayal set in Chaptal and Rupak, though these are much shorter time spans. That is, the duration between matras is much shorter than Ektal or even Tintal. So, this is a composition in Vilambit Chaptal of 10 matras, and actually, uh, this is a composition in the Dhrupad repertoire, which has been adapted and repurposed by. Khayal singers, tu maraba tu ma sahiba. So that's the first line of the composition, and this has been memorably rendered uh, by Pandit Bhim Sen Joshi. This is in Rag Brindavani Sarang, and uh, a link to his performance of this composition of uh, Brindavani Sarang around this composition is given below. Please do listen to it.
Let us also look at a Willem with uh, Rupak composition in the rag, Hindol. The uh, composition is a, a description of Holi. has to fall on basan okay let the basan that is not uh, negotiable you can't change that but the mukhra where you start how you start it that is all uh, very variable okay let the basan so um so this was a, a brief look at uh, the vilambit khayal which as I said, it's a very unique kind of composition. And uh, we also looked at uh, a few uh, themes in these compositions. And uh, we had a sample of Vilambit Khayals in different talas. In the next video, we will look at some other kinds of composition that are used in Khayal, that is Khayal the genre. We have looked at Chota Khayal and Bada Khayal, which are the primary uh, compositional forms that are used in Khayal, the genre. But we do have uh, definitely, there is one other very prominent, uh, commonly encountered form, which is the Tarana. We will take a look at that very quickly in the next video. <laughs>